I got it, my Google store order finally came in. It is here. This is the new Pixel 9 Pro XL in rose quartz. This is the 256 gig option, which I purchased myself for this review. So huge thank you for watching this video, clicking on my affiliate links down below, because that all helps cover some of the cost of this uh, somewhat expensive purchase. Now I'm gonna show you my unboxing here and getting it set up since there are a bunch of new settings in the 9 series Pixel phones. And we need to go through those to make sure your phone is set up securely and everything gets switched over properly. Now I have one of my old phones here as well. I've got my SIM card and I know my Google account details. Also, if you use a physical pass key or a YubiKey, make sure that you have got those in hand. No, this video is not sponsored, but I do have some sponsored videos on my channel with YubiKey. I actually use YubiKeys in real life, so this is perfectly normal for me. Now I've already backed up my old phone via the menu options and I do want to mention some settings for both Google Pixel as well as Samsung, just in case you're moving over from either of those. On my Samsung Flip 6, I do the backup by going to settings, account and backup, and then backup. I backup now and I do this for both Samsung Cloud and Google Drive. That just kind of depends on your personal setup needs. And on a Google Pixel, you'll go to settings, system, and choose backup, and then backup now. Now, if you use a 2FA app like Google Authenticator, Ubico's Authenticator, or Authy, you may want to temporarily turn on backup so that you can easily switch the 2FA app over to your new phone without having to reset up all the different 2FA accounts. So I'm gonna use Authy for this example from one of my previous phones. I go to settings, accounts, turn on backup, and allow multi-device. Now you'll notice here, you can just disable multi-device and backups later on your new phone if you prefer that more secure option, and I highly recommend doing so. Now similarly, if you use any third party apps like WhatsApp for messages, go into the settings for those apps and make sure that you have backed up whatever data that you wanna keep. On my new Pixel, this thing is really pretty. I'm gonna follow the on-screen setup directions to add my SIM card and then copy my old phone data onto this new phone. Now that also includes getting connected to Wi-Fi and 5G. And while it's doing that, the Pixel is gonna ask me to turn on some settings. Now these are really important. This is the part that I really wanted to dig into depending on your personal feels about privacy. So let's go ahead and walk through them. Now you can always go back and turn these settings on in the settings app after you have set up your phone. So first off, we have the Google services and location services. That includes allowing apps with location permissions to use your location. Google also uses this data for location-based services and accuracy. Allow scanning. This allows apps to scan for Wi-Fi networks at any time, even when Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is off. And then we have send usage and diagnostic data. This sends anonymous data to Google for diagnostics. Backup your device lets you backup photos and videos and other data to your Google account. This is very useful in case like if your phone gets stolen, then you still have your photos backed up onto your Google Photos. The new Google AI page, this part is brand new. This page explains what Google's AI does. That includes Gemini, Circle to Search, Add Me, Screenshots, and Studio. The next page allows you to either enable Gemini or skip it entirely by scrolling down and then pressing Not Now, which only appears after you have scrolled down. So make sure you scroll down to find that button. Next is search your screenshots with device AI. This is new as well. It saves and processes details from screenshots to turn it into a searchable library. It kind of reminds me of Microsoft Recall, but only for screenshots that you have manually taken yourself. I think that was smart of Google to do it that way. Again, the no thanks messaging only appears after you have scrolled down. You can also disable or keep car crash detection on. I do keep that turned on on my phones. And you can also turn off letting contacts nearby find and share with you. I do turn that off, then you can enable Google Pay to use your phone to pay in store. This is actually a quite secure way to pay if you do choose to use it. I'm kind of old, I still carry around credit cards. And once it's restored all of my data, I'm gonna set up the lock screen, extremely important as well. This phone supports both an in-screen fingerprint sensor as well as a face unlock. Now I usually set up two fingers just in case I lose one. I mean, you never know, hopefully it never happens, but you never know. And I also do face unlock which is great for winter. It's Colorado. I wear gloves. Next, I will go ahead and log into my security apps like my 2FA app and my password manager. Once I've got both of those logged
logged in. I'll go ahead and check through them and just make sure everything has synced properly. I can set up the rest of my apps really easily once I have those two apps ready to go and in place. Also, remember to disable multi-device on your phones. Once your 2FA app is set up and you have access to all those 2FA one-time codes. Grab your pass key or your YubiKey, use this thing to log into whichever apps allow for hardware multi-factor authentication. I do have a USB-C one because all of my devices nowadays are USB-C. Now from here, I can do all those operating system updates. Underneath the settings, system, and software updates, I can ensure that this has the most up-to-date version of Android, which it does. Also, make sure to update all those apps that have updates available. From the Google Play Store and in the app overview, you can find any additional apps that you want to reinstall or update if any of them have updates available. Underneath the settings, you can add accounts as needed. Go over to your settings, click passwords, pass keys, and accounts. Click add account and add your account details. Now, even though I'm sure a lot of people in my audience will probably turn both of these off because you're worried about privacy issues, totally understandable. Since this is a test device, I am going to configure Google Assistant and Gemini. And yes, I do use Google Assistant. I find it to be very, very useful for accessibility. Open Assistant settings underneath the settings, Google settings, Google, then settings for Google apps. And then we have search assistant in voice and Google assistant. This is also where you will find those Gemini settings. Now, both of these settings have tons of different customization options. I want to keep this video short and sweet, so I'm not going to go through every single one of these. But if you are worried about privacy, if you're worried about what kind of data is being collected, I would recommend clicking on each and every single one of those different options and making sure that they are set up entirely to your customizations and preferences. Now, once all of that is done, we can go ahead and customize the new phone. Do not forget to restart, to install all those updates, and you should be all set to start using your new phone. Now, my phone has just arrived. I got a consumer shipment. This was not under embargo or anything like that. So I am going to be taking my time with a review to give you a very, very solid representation of what you can expect if you're planning to purchase one of these brand new and beautiful Google Pixel 9 Pro XLs. My first First impressions are that it feels really high quality. It looks really nice. It is very quick and very zippy. I appreciate that. And it seems like the Wi-Fi speeds on here are really, really nice. So I am quite pleased with what I have seen so far. But again, I just took this thing out of the box. I just set it up and first impressions can always change. So I do recommend subscribing if you have not already. Thank you again so much for checking out this video. I hope you get your pixel set up to your preferences. And of course, keep those security and privacy details in mind while you are setting your own up. I hope this video was useful and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all. I keep staring at this phone and thinking that it's an iPhone sitting next to me. This thing looks a lot like an iPhone.